This week's adventure is to ride the Wolfpen Gap. The Wolfpen Gap is situated in the North Georgia mountains and it's very much the um, kind of uh, Deals Gap, the dragon of the south really. Uh, there's some very lovely roads uh, in the North Georgia mountains uh, but the Wolfpen Gap uh, is very highly rated. And while we're at it, we're going to do the uh, Six Gap Challenge. Uh, if you want to know the route for that, uh, go to sixgap.com and you'll be able to download route maps. But it's essentially kind of figure of eight between kind of uh, Helen in the east and Two Wheels of Suches in the west. And all of the roads are, are wonderful, particularly the Richard Russell Scenic Highway and the Wolfpen Gap and uh, Route 60. So if you're in the neighbourhood, enjoy it. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how it went today and also show a bit of footage on the uh, Wolfpen Gap. So joining me on the ride today is a multiple championship uh, racer, Irving Colick, who's joining us on uh, a Ducati 748S uh, Senna in graphite with red wheels. It's just finished uh, restoring that and uh, it looks pretty resplendent so he wanted to give it a shakedown test. In addition to that we have uh, Eric Laidhold on the uh, white Multistrada. Uh, Eric rides, uh, rides pretty well, pretty fast and uh, good to see him today with a, a new shaven head which uh, he did for uh, raising money for charity. Also joining us is a uh, usual uh, uh, amigo, Jerry Brooks, on his uh, uh, red BMW R1200GS, GS Adventure, I should say. And uh, also um, someone you've not seen yet, but is, uh, is a fairly regular rider with us, and uh, that is John Booker on uh, the Superhawk. Our first stopping place today was a place called Hoffers, which is a Germanic themed restaurant in Helen. And the food was pretty delicious there, the service was pretty good. So if you're ever in that town, uh, check them out. And of course, after lunch, uh, the big banter continued. So what, what I want to know is. Uh oh, wait, we have a new camera? Huh? This is, this is the same Where, where's my boom mic? This is this is my Wait, testing. Okay. All right, one hundred feet. Is this on? With the with the flip up screen. Whoa! How cool is that? Now you're cutting off my head. <laughs> so so what I want to know this week is I was thinking about uh, at the moment they're working on heads up uh, technology or visors and I thought I would really hate that. I've got heads up in the car and it's great. But in a bike, I think having the images flash up in your visor is too distracting. So, what, about, what about rear view? So, Is it going to be awful? Well, this, this, it got me thinking what technology would we like to see next. So the technology I would like to see is, for instance, in the Mercedes cars now, some of the Mercedes cars, they've got magic sky sunroofs. You can press a button, it will go instantly black, and then you press it again, it goes instantly clear. They have bathrooms with those doors. Which, which, well. <laughs> which would be great for visors, it would be great for screen. <coughs> Another thing I'd like to see is cruise control is really good, but I'd like to see active cruise control with a radar, yeah? So it will, with with radar. radar. So, so if it's talking to your gyroscope on the bike, as long as your bike's upright or thereabouts, uh, if you forget to brake or you're distracted, it will automatically brake for you. Yeah, like your Mercedes. Exactly, just like your car. I'd like to see that. And then the other thing I'd really like to see is um, with, say, like the Kindle Paperwhite e-reader, you can read it in brilliant sunshine. E-ink. And I'd love that, an e-ink um, clocks, even if it was just black yeah, and white. that makes sense. And so you could see it perfectly in sunlight all the time. And I would burn, less, burn less juice. Yeah, exactly. Not the URL CD. Uh, so okay. what, what technology do you Of those, like of those, well, or any other that any I can other, think of, other, I think that uh, assisted braking based upon proximity yeah. would be yeah. a huge bonus. I know people who have wrecked. Yeah. that might have been able to avoid that if the, if the bike was smart and sensed an impending wreck from the, from the front. Jerry would choose ABS, but that's that's current technology. So, yeah, I wouldn't. So, I mean, my choice is I wouldn't buy a bike without ABS. So 
Jerry, Jerry, what tech do you want to see? I'd like a um, owner's manual that I can read and understand and actually hold my attention and not put me to sleep. Yeah? That's it. Do you have your owner's manual as a PDF on your phone? I always keep copy. I know, I, it's right here. So. But, but I, I can't read it. It, help, it doesn't hold my attention. Like is it like my? Is it like my instructions story. for programming Aren't your garment? It's, it's not like 415. Uh, it's, 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 no, it's not like 415 is written. If you exactly. Read 415, and, and by the way, look at the twist at the end totally threw me. Exactly. It did. Don't tell him. Don't, I won't. don't tell Elvin. He's halfway through the book. Oh, yeah, I just I just finished it a few weeks ago. Yeah, so. nobody nobody gets it. Good so, so you got to finish couldn't, it. Couldn't guess it. Exactly. The second half's better. I started it. Um, I've been, I've been just tired. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good read. See, I work. We all are retired. I have to work. So, so you'd like an easy to read owner's manual. Something unlike my instructions to you on how to program your garment or sent you to sleep. I'm having a hard enough time keeping everything that I can do now. All right. So, so here comes John. Jerry wants less tech. He's a Luddite. That's right. It's like the R19. So we're talking Pushing about the square wheels. So, so John, we're talking about uh, te technology. What do you want to see next on, the, on bikes? I want to see active cruise control. I'm, I'm still waiting to upgrade my own bike to get what's current. <laughs> you'd, like, uh, you'd like longer brake hoses. Ridiculous. Uh, yeah, longer brake hoses would be nice. Uh, uh, standard all in suspension on everything would be fantastic. Well, you need to buy one of the Irving's bikes. That's got, yeah, that's got, that's got, uh, that's got, already, yeah. that's got Irving's suspension on everything. The front and rear. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. That's what my buddy's uh, Yamaha R1 had. It was the uh, anniversary bike. And my mom, with all that. Monster 1200R was all, all yeah. fully all in stuff. So. Uh, the suspension. Which kind? Kind of gallant. Yeah, yeah. yeah semi active. Front and rear. Yeah, it's semi active. You can control yeah. it. A bit like the GS. Well. GS has set that. Up for turns on the, on the course. I think you can, but not with the current software. I'm not sure. Because I think some of the teams have that. Yeah, they, I've read about that, where they set it up so that it, 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 it basically presets yeah, for different turns on a track. So, there we go. So tell me, let's play, let's play unfriend friend party. Okay. All right. That's about this is going to work. So, George Clooney. Keanu Reeves, Brad Pitt. Unfriend, friend, party. Who do you party with out of George Clooney, Keanu, Keanu and Brad? Uh, I think Brad Pitt. He's an alcoholic. He's got to have a, he's got to be a good have, time. He can party. Have some fun. <laughs> Although, though Ke Keanu owns a motorcycle. He does. He races. I'd have to so, friend, I'd so, have a friend so, so he'd be friend. So that means... But I think George oh, Clooney oh, is cool. I'd probably rather party with him. Brad Pitt rides okay. as well, doesn't he? He's he does. Adding, yeah. He does. Not only does he ride, he produces motorcycle movies. Right. Oh yes, that's right. Is he actually yeah, riding? I, 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 that's totally confusing. I know it. <laughs> so, let's do, so okay. you don't know what my answers are. No, it's too okay. confusing. Perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> let's do Irving then. It's like University Challenge, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Nice question. James McAvoy, Robert Downey Jr., or David Beckham. Unfriend, friend, party. Who are you going to party with? Robert Downey Jr. He bites a drink, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. But he's a bit of a showman, isn't he? Yeah. Dave Beckham, As Tony Stark, he certainly is. So, says Irving, the championship winning racer. No, I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe Beckham, I don't know. Beckham? Yeah. Yeah. I think it okay. could be interesting. Who, who would you unfriend? McAvoy? Mm, I'd, I'd, probably. I'd probably have Beckham as a friend, I think, and yeah. party, party with Robert. And uh, don't know James very well. Did you skew the questions with, you know, British intent? No, not no, at all. That's just a random <coughs> okay. chance? Yeah. So Jerry's going to get three Americans. Ben Affleck, Johnny Depp, Matt Damon. Who do you party with? Uh, Johnny Depp. Oh, Johnny sure. Depp. And yeah. who do you have as a friend, Ben Affleck or Matt, Matt Damon? Three of the we're probably the same. Rich didn't Sorry. Get, Rich didn't Nothing get against. Nothing against. Okay. So John gets. Oh, yeah, thank you. Just a little bit. Bunch of chips. Yeah, I do want to take those with me. So John gets. Great. You get Daniel Radcliffe, Justin Timberlake, or Idris Elba. Daniel is Harry Potter, right? Yeah. Okay. 
So I would, I would friend Justin Timberlake only because my wife would pretty much do anything for me after that. Okay. Um, my wife too. Uh, <laughs> both too religious. Uh, I can't see Daniel Radcliffe being much of a party guy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I probably with Idris. Yeah. I like him, I like his stuff. Daniel, yeah, I just don't know much about him. He's too young. Okay, bonus question for you then. Let's play, um, let's play, um, Sleep Date Mary. <laughs> right? So, um, Jessica Alba, um, who else should we say? Mila Kunis, or... You're just saying that because you think your wife's going to watch this thing. I don't even know who you're married. Sleep with Megan Fox. Sure, Jerry. Uh, Dates. What well, was easy? Uh, Camila Kunis yes. and Mary Jessica Alba. Ooh, interesting. Mary Jessica Alba. I look forward to your wife watching that. Movie. <laughs> she looks most like my wife. After we'd... Uh, discuss what we'd like to see in the future on our bikes it was time to hit the roads again so we put on our helmets and uh, headed off for the six gap challenge we made our way down blood mountain and uh, eventually uh, we came to the left hand turn for wolf pen gap signpost 180 there's a few uh, harley riders out enjoying that on that particular day and um <clears throat> Ahead of me is uh, is Eric on the white Multistrada. He also owns a, a, a Diavel and also a, a CVO Harley. And he's a very tidy rider, takes nice lines, nice and smooth, and a, a similar riding ability to myself. And ahead of him is, is Irvin. He's the, the fast guy in the group, obviously, uh, being a, a, a proper racer. And he's on one of his... Uh, great many bikes and uh, he's uh, taking it easy frankly so that we uh, we don't get too too lost behind him and uh, the first part of the gap is uh, is really nice it's uh, it's particularly twisty the second half is more open but the, the first half is very twisty and uh, what the video doesn't always show is that there's, there's quite a bit of up and down elevation and some of these bends look like kind of gentle curves but they're actually very uh, very sharp we're typically like second gear and 7000 revs and uh you know really using a lot of counter steer to get around them uh it looks like a, like a playful pussycat in the video sometimes but um actually um hustling these bikes fairly quickly uh in these these tight and twisty bends obviously you have to keep uh, uh an eye on uh, the lines here because uh, you could easily end up on the wrong side of the road and that's uh, that's not a good situation. So for us it's always uh, a case of uh, slow in, fast out and wide in, tight out. So around these right hand bends we're, we're trying to get out to the yellow line and then cut back to the, the white line apex and the reverse on the left handers. Get over near the, the white line and cut to the uh, double yellows on the apex. And uh, we just hope there's no gravel on the on any of the the curbs. But um, this road was actually uh, resurfaced in the last couple of years, and they made a really decent job of it. Actually, um, it used to be very bumpy, lots of tar snakes, uh, often lots of gra loose gravel about, and now it's uh, it's pretty smooth. You, you can still see some lines on it in places, but believe me, it's. Uh, it's not kind of a, a ripple effect at all. It's a, it's a nice, smooth uh, road to ride on. If you watch some of these bends, they're well signposted, but this is a complete 180 turn and with plenty of elevation as well. The elevation is works in this kind of uh, east to west uh, direction. You can always use a little bit more throttle when you're, uh, you're going uphill into a bend than when you're going downhill. Uh, here's another uh, 180 degree bend and uh, this is more, more flat uh, this time. Although you can see there is a little bit of elevation. And um, yeah, you always uh, have to be more wary of that going downhill, particularly in the wet, off camber, etc. What you can't see so clearly, you might see a bit in the video, is off to the right here is uh, you know, about a thousand foot drop. And uh, so you don't want to launch it off a, 
off the cliff there either. Although one of those trees is bound to um, get you before uh, before you, you fall too far. Although that's not particularly reassuring, is it? So um, you know, we uh, we try and ride well within our limits uh, along these roads. You never know what you're going to come across, and uh, it only takes a, a second or two of lapse of judgment, and suddenly. Uh, your bike's tumbling down down a cliff face, and uh, and you're not far after it. And um, you know if you think you're worried about your bike, wait till you uh, you're flying off a cliff. So uh, take it easy if you ride this for the first time. But once you've ridden it a few times, you'll you'll get to know which way the, the bends curve, and you can enjoy it a bit. We got stuck here a little bit behind uh, some Harley Cruiser riders. As you can see, uh, the guy at the back is a nice guy we, we've just been talking to at Blood Mountain. He's not part of that group and uh, he goes to overtake uh, them in a second. And he's on a um, Ducati X Diavel, which uh, he really enjoys. So Eric was having a long discussion with him, uh, being a, a current Diavel owner. I'm actually an ex um, uh, Carbon Red Diavel owner as well. So. Uh, I like my Ducatis, they're, they're, they're lots of fun. But you can see uh, he, got, uh, he gets a bit frustrated and zooms off on his ex Diavel. Of course, it's got plenty of grunt, that, um, that uh, Testa Strata 11 degree engine. So um, it makes a to play of uh, those kind of overtakes. Um, we, uh, we bide our time a little bit more. Uh, he who gets there last still gets there. And um, Irving sees a, a gap a long way ahead, and Eric follows, and I'm, I'm quick to follow after that. Sometimes when you're following like I was there, you actually have a better view than the guy up front. And then uh, sometimes it's, it's vice versa, of course, you know, they, the guy ahead can keep uh, can keep up momentum and can see a gap and can get there. And by the time you get to whatever it is you're overtaking, you get balked and, uh, and everybody slows down. But everybody who rides with me regularly, we're confident overtakers and uh, and courteous as well. We'll buy the time when we need to. Um, we'll ensure that anybody we overtake, they never need to alter their line. They never need to uh, brake or adjust their driving in any way whatsoever. And I think that's, that's good uh, common sense and, and courtesy, just to ensure that when you, you pass them, Hopefully you don't scare them, but more importantly, uh, you do it in a safe way that isn't going to endanger you or endanger them in any way, any, any shape or form. So for instance here, I could have probably followed Eric and done that overtake, but really I'd be cutting this guy's nose off, and what for, just for a couple of seconds, it really doesn't matter. I wait till here, I look a long, long way ahead, I can see there's nothing coming, I've got the power in my bike, I can easily overtake, and yeah, I'm a little bit behind the guys there, but you know, as I say, we're not riding 100% here, we're riding, mainly riding maybe 90%, so I can just turn it up 5% if I need to and catch the guys ahead, and hopefully don't end up squished like that big fly that's just landed on the GoPro. So, um, as you can see, we're getting into the kind of second part of uh, the Wolf Pen Gap now. It's still very flowing. Um, in fact, it's more flowing now, really, in some ways, because the roads are really opening up and uh, there's not really any side roads to speak of. So we're not really in any danger of anybody pulling out on us. There's no gas stations, there's no buildings, there's, there's no real housing or, uh, or anything like that. Um, we're only gonna see other vehicles on the road. And as this gap is lightly used, uh, we're not, we don't come up against the vehicles too much. And when we do, visibility is good. In fact, visibility is a lot better than what you see on the camera. Again, I'm biding my time here. I could have easily overtaken, but you, you've got a power to weight ratio on a bike. Uh, overtaking's effortless. You can just sit back, let them sort it out, and then uh, when you've got the, the right time, you can overtake. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's better to uh, take your time not feel tense, not feel nervous, not feel aggressive. I'm actually um, really super relaxed in, at this point and uh, even more relaxed through here. We, we see some pedestrians and cars, so we slow right down to below 20 miles an hour. And we're just making sure there's no kids about, dogs or anything that's likely to run out of front view. Um, pay a bit, a bit forwards in terms of respect and 
keep bikers with a good name. And then once the, uh, the hazards are clear, we can start turning up the wick a little bit again. And, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> it really pays to uh, uh, learn your road craft, learn your lines, know your machine in terms of what its braking ability is, its turning ability, how good your tyres are, and make sure your tyre pressures are good, etc. And as I was saying, really riding through here, I'm 100% relaxed. You know, my, my arms are relaxed. I haven't got a death grip on the bars or anything like that. I'm breathing smoothly through my nose and just feeling very relaxed. I could be really meditating. It's almost like a, a yoga pose. There's no need to feel like you're in a race and uh, you're, you know, you're riding at 110% and, you know, you're riding beyond your capabilities. That's not going to help you think clearly. It's not going to help the uh, machine be responsive to your inputs. So always be completely relaxed. You know, ride with a, a level head. Uh, obviously, uh, never ride after an argument with the, your partner or after drinking alcohol or anything like that. And, uh, and then um, when you're kind of riding at these speeds on, uh, you know, open roads, uh, you will be in tip-top shape in terms of being able to avoid sudden hazards and um, be able to control your machine properly should, uh, should there be something unforeseen like gravel in the road or some big pothole that sends your bike off at a tangent, you'll be in uh, much better shape to, to actually handle that kind of, kind of hazard. So we're getting more close to the end of the gap now, which is at the Suches end. And we're going to meet up at uh, Two Wheels of Suches, um, which is a place we often go to and is very, very popular with bikers in the North Georgia mountains. And uh, they have a, a kind of cafe, a log cabin cafe, where they serve kind of, um, you know, everyday fair food and drinks. And they've got 81 deck chairs to sit on outside. And at the back, they've got a big campsite. So uh, people are often camping out the back. And uh, as, as I say, it's extremely popular with bikers. And also at the end of uh, the Wolf Pen Gap here is um, there's a gas station. So uh, again, if you're going to be up here riding, be aware of that. There is a gas station at the end of this this gap. And again, it's very popular with uh, with riders, and not just actually road riders, but off-road riders. You'll see at the end of this, um, when we go past that uh, gas station, there's probably 10 or 15 uh, off-road, dedicated off-road riders that uh, like to fill up there because close by there's a lot of uh, fire trails and gravel roads and um, um, hills and, and trails that are open to uh, the general public to enjoy. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's nice to see those lads uh, getting out um, and enjoying themselves as, as much as we were on the roads here. So uh, you probably saw uh, just back there, Eric point, pointed out a hazard in the road with his foot. If you're new to riding, that, again, that's just common courtesy once you start riding with others. If you see a dead animal in the road or something that might, um, you know, disrupt the bike in terms of its steering if the rider were to hit it then uh, you know point it out to people with your foot or with your hand obviously without endangering yourself but um, make sure that uh, they're aware there's something in the road best best avoid uh, avoided so that they can uh, adjust their speed and line uh, accordingly so uh, there's one or two uh, um, houses as we get closer to the end of the gap and more like farms really and um, I don't know if the camera will pick it up but there's some beautiful vistas particularly off to the left hand side where you can just see beautiful mountains in, in the distance and uh, we're still loving the roads here uh, the, the roads uh, are very open at this point and we're able to get a, a decent consistent speed on um, but as uh, we we approach the end of it, we're actually, you can see there's a policeman on the left hand side there, uh, making sure that everybody's uh, paying attention to speed limits, as of course we were the entire route. And um, as we come to the end of the, the Wolf Pen Gap here, you'll see that gas station I mentioned that's off on the right hand side. 
and um, this gas station's got, um, I don't know, maybe 12, 15 uh, dirt bikes there and some road bikes as well because this is this is the left right for Route 60 and I'd highly recommend that all the way from Dahlonega up to the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's absolutely stunning. Taking the Riverside uh, Restaurant at Takoa or the Takoa Riverside Restaurant I should say uh, for lunch, uh, that would be my recommendation. But Route 60 is a, a beautiful ride as well. And this is us just pulling into two wheels of Suches, uh, some some nice uh, Rocket 3s on the right there. I'll probably post uh, some photos of those. And as you can see, lots of people here. It's a hot day, it's about 88 degrees, and it's probably 30 bikes or so outside this place. So we were ripe to uh, to stop and get off the bikes and have a cool drink. So here's the uh, photos I promised of the uh, the Rocket 3s, uh, obviously uh, all friends of each other and uh, sensibly customised, so that's nice to see. A couple of bikes from the old uh, hometown. Anyway, um, if you like the video, subscribe, like and comment, and uh, above all else, ride safely, ride often, ride on.